Boomer Esiason is brought to you this week by McFarland Energy, the home heating oil and HVAC pros that Greater Boston and the Cape depend on at McFarlandEnergy.com by Shaw's and Star Market, perfecting the art of fresh by Town Fair Tire for the best prices on tires. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. And by your New England Kubota tractor dealers and Boomer joins us this morning on the Harbor One Hotline. Hi, Boomer. Oh, good morning, Greg. Finally, we get to talk about it. it it's it's come to an end. I'm actually <laughs> kind of sad, you know? I mean, I look back, and we talked about this late October, and then again, like on no- November 20th, about Bill Belichick and what was going to happen to him. I don't know if you remember those conversations. Yes, like they were yesterday. I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I take no pride in any of that stuff. I mean, but it, you just, it, it felt right, and what I was happy to see at least Two men came to an agreement, it seems. Uh, They left the room, and everybody is in good shape. They'll honor Bill Belichick in due time. And Bob Kraft recognized that his team got stale. So hearing this morning that he's interviewed for the Falcons job, um, there's obviously opportunities that might exist that he doesn't know about, Mm -hmm. whether it's the Cowboys or elsewhere. What, What do you think happens with Bill? You know, if if I had if I'd be a betting man, I would bet on the Falcons, and there's two reasons. One, uh, an owner who's 81 years old and who's a really great guy. I mean, he's a solid owner. He's not a meddling owner. He's not a maniac. He's not some sort of like uh, you know depressed lunatic who couldn't make his baseball team back when he was you know 10 years old. Uh, this guy is a solid guy, and he has all the resources that he needs. The only thing he really doesn't have is a quarterback which he's dealt with the last four years. But this is an up-and-coming roster. It's a loaded roster. It's got a lot of great athletes on it. Um, I would think that that would make a lot of sense to me because everywhere else, and by the way, the the, the building is pre- pretty much clear of GM and all of that stuff too. So I would think that would be an allure for Bill. Uh, most of the other buildings don't have that except for the Chargers, and I just don't see – the Spanos family and Bill Belichick kind of coming together and trying to put a football team together that way, even though Justin Herbert is really the big hook out there. Do you think Robert and Jonathan Kraft made a mistake by contractually guaranteeing that job to Gerard Mayo? No, I don't. I, I mean, I, I, I think Gerard knows how the family operates the team. I think there's been a lot of success with the way that the team has been operated over the last 24 years. So I don't, uh, I don't see a problem with that. Uh, Gerard has worked hard. Uh, he has started from the bottom up, even though he was a great player. Um, you know, I, I see that. You know, it's interesting. You you have a number of linebackers that are becoming head coaches, uh, middle linebackers for that matter, guys who had the green dot on their helmet that were leaders among men on the field. So I, I I'm hoping that Gerard turns out to be like D'Amico Ryan's and is uh, respected by his players, and they find a young quarterback in this draft up and coming. And who knows, maybe maybe he is the elixir to, you know, basically what this team turned into over the last three years, and he can turn it around quickly, much like D'Amico Ryans did down in Houston. Boomer, I know you said that Atlanta, you know, looks like a great landing spot for him. But if you're the Dallas Cowboys and you're Jerry Jones, how are you not sitting there? I mean, if I'm him, how am I you're not sitting there going, the greatest coach of all time is out there. I have a team that's ready made and the coach, the head coach McCarthy, it seems like just isn't getting the job done. How are you not beating down his door? Well, you may be, uh, Wiggy. I don't know. I mean, my thing is, is uh, Bill likes to be Bill. You know, he's uh, he's. We all know who he is. He's a legend, and you know, working for the Jones family, I don't necessarily know it's all that easy. You know, <laughs> Bill doesn't <laughs> like leaks out of the locker room, and before the game's even over, Jerry Jones has already given a freaking interview. So <laughs> I don't necessarily know that that works for Bill Belichick. It worked for Bill Parcells, but I think Bill Parcells got a big payday, and he wanted one more payday, and he got it. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Jerry Jones does reach out to him, but I'm just, I'm just – kind of thinking of the way that Bill does things and his way is the Patriot way or now going to be the next way uh, for the team that he goes to. And and yeah, I, I would see that marriage as like that would just blow up the entire NFL, be the greatest thing ever. But if you really look at what's going on um, and you want the right fit, the right owner and the right way of doing things the way that you want to do things, then I think Atlanta makes the most sense. But I, you know, I, I, again, that's just me looking at it from, you know, 10,000 feet up and looking at 
maybe the just a situation where Bill would fit more comfortably. All I do know is that I, this NFL is out of, it's out of control. And Adam Schefter, I think, said something towards the end of November that he thought there were going to be eight to ten job openings. We're at eight right now, and now we got to wait for Philadelphia and Dallas to determine whether or not their coaches are both going to stay. Boomer, some are outraged of the report over the weekend that Gerard Mayo is uh, offering an extension to Steve and Brian Belichick to keep them here in New England. Uh, where do you fall on that? I, I think you look at the defense, especially for Steve, and you, and you say, well, of course he's going to offer them. They, they seem to have a good relationship. Why, why wouldn't he want to keep him on, on, on staff? I wouldn't be outraged. I mean, <laughs> these guys have a relationship. I think it's pretty amazing uh, that Gerard feels comfortable enough to keep Steve in the building if he still wants him there. You know, and Gerard talked about their relationship, how it started in scouting and breaking down film and things of that nature, which is what I could really truly appreciate about a guy like Gerard Mayo getting a chance. It's the same thing about D'Amico Ryans. You know, they, they were great players when they played, but they had to learn how to become a coach. And when you learn how to become a coach, especially under the Belichick tree, uh, you have to go through all the machinations of all the the dirty work, the, the work that nobody sees. And he did that, along with Steve Belichick, for that matter. And that's why they probably speak the same language. And I'm sure that Gerard wants some familiarity around him. Uh, the big question for me would be, who is going to be his offensive coordinator? What is his offensive side of the football going to look like? And who are they going to be able to draft in this draft? Which young quarterback is going to be sitting there for them? Uh, to base, basically build a uh, an offense around. As a guy who was a rookie quarterback at one time, a long, long, long time ago. Holy Christ, Greg! It was <laughs> a long time ago, and you don't have to keep bringing it up. How impressive! How impressive has what C.J. Stroud has done this season been? Oh, to you? he's he's off the charts, man. I mean, especially. And Wiggy can appreciate this. I think getting hurt in the middle of the season, where he missed a couple games, might have helped him. Um, give him a little reset, refresh. Uh, but his poise, his accuracy, uh, his sturdiness, uh, his leadership, the way that he is uh, talks about uh, the game after the game is over, how humble he is. He's beloved by his teammates. But, you know, ultimately you still have to perform. And he's performing in big spots. And remember, they lost Tank Dell, one of their best wide receivers. And Nico Collins is filled in admirably. But uh, this is a team that's on fire right now. I don't think they can go into Baltimore and win. I really don't. Uh, if they do, that would be amazing, and that would be a further, um, I, I think, validation for the selection of D'Amico Ryans and uh, the selection of C.J. Stroud, number two overall in the draft last year. Kansas City has to go to up, up to Buffalo. Josh Allen, very impressive, I thought, yesterday, that 52-yard run and, and, uh, and other things. Uh, how difficult will it be for the Chiefs to play that game there? I don't think all that difficult. I, I, it's going to be a close game. It's going to be a high-scoring game. Uh, I think Buffalo got nicked up again yesterday. They lost one of their better linebackers, Bernard, so they are really thin at the linebacker spot. Uh, one thing Kansas City does do, they run the ball uh, exceptionally well. The defensive line for Buffalo is just going to have to be you know, all over Patrick Mahomes in this running game because, they, they like I said, they're thin at the linebacker position. Um, I, I just think it's going to be a great game. You know, This is game seven between these two guys. Uh, they're 3-3. Three and three. Patrick owns a 2-0 and oh playoff uh, record against Josh. Josh is 3-1 and one in the regular season and finally gets him in his building uh, in a big game, which I'm sure they are looking forward to. But Josh Allen was picture perfect yesterday. He didn't have to be Superman. All he had to be is great, which he was, and he didn't turn the ball over. And, uh, you know, this is what uh, Kansas City is going to run into. So this is what we were hoping for for Divisional Weekend. We got him 6-30 on Sunday on CBS, and it doesn't get much better than this. Boom. One of the things that you said was that was really interesting, and we kind of talked about this last week, the most important thing for Mayo is who he is going to hire as that offensive coordinator, that play call, because I think – you know, we're all on the same page as far as where they are in the draft, that it's one of those two quarterbacks or, you know, my opinion, Marvin Harrison Jr. So I don't think there's going to be a lot of scrutiny on that. But the biggest thing I think we as fans are looking at is who is the next guy to bring this offense into today's football or do we see a guy like Josh McDaniels or even a guy like Billy O'Brien where he runs it back because you said it is familiarity. Would you like to see him go completely away from any former Patriot coach when it comes to the offensive coordinator? I, I would. And um, all right, so a couple things there, a lot to unpack. Number one, there are about six teams in this league 
who run an awesome offense. That's the 49ers, the Packers, the Texans, Rams, Bengals, and Dolphins. And this is all coming out of the Mike Shanahan when he was with the Washington Redskins when they were called the Redskins. And all these young guys were on that staff. And then Kyle Shanahan went to the 49ers and, you know, built that offense the way that it looks. I mean, and all these other teams are running a uh, a variation of that offense depending on who is calling the plays, who's designing the plays, whether it be Mike McDaniel down in Miami. It could be Sean McVay with the Rams. It could be Bobby Slowick with the Texans. That's why I think – Bobby Slowick's probably going to be, if I had, if I were a betting man, I think he's going to be the head coach of the Tennessee Titans because they're in the same division as the Texans. So you want to lessen the Texans. You want to make them worse, but you want to make yourself better. And hopefully a young quarterback is going to be better under him, just like C.J. Stroud has been under him in Houston. So I would think somewhere along the line, one of the coaches off of those staffs make a lot of sense to me when I look around the NFL. I don't see them running it back with Bill O'Brien. And I have to I have to disagree with you, Wiggy. I, I first of all I think Romeo Dunze is better than Marvin Harrison Jr. And number two, I think they desperately need a young quarterback to build around. And that's exactly what we're seeing in Houston. That's hey, look at the four quarterbacks that have made now the divisionals. You have Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and of course CJ Stroud. That tells you that it's still a quarterback driven league. Mm-hmm. Mike Tomlin walking off the podium when his contract was brought up. What do you take anything away from that? You know, Cardi, I am so glad you asked me that because the NFL is filled with passive-aggressive, narcissistic lunatics. <laughs> and they're all over the place. And he's one of them, just like, you know, Wink Martindale's one of them, Brian Dable's one of them, Bill Belichick's one of them. They all send a message some way, shape, or form. And I think it's gotten so much worse since the pandemic. I think it's gotten so much worse since social media gets involved. All these guys see and hear everything. And um, I was uh, a little bit taken aback that he wouldn't answer the question and just say, hey, this is the Pittsburgh Steelers. They never negotiate during the season. It's always a postseason situation when I sit down with my contract, much like it was with Bill Cower. I was shocked. that I I know he just lost the game. I know that he was – uh, you know, in a losing mind frame, and coaches don't like to answer questions that have nothing to do with the game. But man, I, I thought that was a little bit, you know, passive aggressive on his part, and maybe tells us more than we really know about what's going on in Pittsburgh. The question of the week for Boomer is brought to you by McFarland Energy, the trusted source in Greater Boston, the North Shore, and all of Cape Cod for home heating, oil delivery, and HVAC work. Kelly Stafford was upset this weekend that her kids were booed. Uh, by Detroit fans, I wanted to ask you the worst thing that happened to you in your career uh, when, right. when, when it came to opposing fans. But well, uh, well, you know, I was the Jet quarterback. It was my last game against the New Orleans Saints. I think we were three and twelve, and they were like two and what? What were the? the if we're three and twelve, they were no. I think they were three and twelve as well. So it was the last game of the year. It was at the Meadowlands, uh, used to be Giant Stadium. And we're out there, warm-ups. It's a rainy, cold, misty day, and it's in December. And there's about 20,000 fans that ultimately showed up for the game. And before the game, I'm out there warming up, you know, and there's a Jet fan behind our bench yelling at me, and he's yelling, hey, Boomer, man, I'm sorry it didn't work out. I know you're not going to be here next year. You know, you're, 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 you're a professional. You always put a good face on it. I hope your son's going to be okay. I'm going to be praying for you. And I'm like, man, this guy's really nice, and he really is, he's going to miss me. So I walk over there to go flip him a football and say thank you. And as I go flip him the football, he goes, I don't want that from you, you piece of crap. You suck, and I can't wait for you to get out of here. So it wasn't an opposing fan. It was an actual Jet fan. <laughs> That's the worst. Yes, it is the worst. All I felt right. about two inches tall, and then I got benched in that game. Oh. Hey, uh, before you before – <laughs> Before you go, your guy, Coach Cower, picked the Lions to get to the Super Bowl. Where are you this morning? I'm still with the 49ers, man. I'm riding the 49ers. I'm a 49er Bills guy. And, um, you know, I thought it was going to be the Eagles and the Jets at the beginning of the year. What a mess that turned out to be. But uh, I'm a 49ers Bills guy right now. I, I think the 49ers are the best team. Still believe that. I know Baltimore is not going to be easy, but um, I think we're going to be in Baltimore for the AFC Championship game. And I think it's going to be Baltimore and the Bills. Okay. All right, Boomer. Thank you. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, guys. Thanks. Have a great day. See you.